Welcome on behalf of Chef Network and Partners Musgrave Marketplace to our webinar this afternoon. Thanks a million for joining us. My name is Ruth Hegarty um, and I'm delighted to be presenting this, this webinar um, this afternoon where we will hear from some people in industry on how they have adapted and readapted their businesses um, in response to the ever-changing landscape that is the COVID-19 crisis. Um, we'll look at what they've done in terms of different restriction levels um, what has worked and some things maybe that haven't worked as well. Um, then later on in the session, we'll look ahead to Christmas and explore what a reimagined Christmas might look like, um, what the offering might be. Um, there's so much <clears throat> uncertainty still around. We'll talk about what people have are trying to plan and what some of the opportunities might be over um, in the run up to Christmas and over the Christmas period. Um, so our webinar today is going to last uh, one hour. Um, we're going to start off with a catch up with three of the panelists from our Taking On Takeaway webinar that we ran with Musgrave back in May. So we're going to hear from Kevin Arundel from the Chop House in Dublin 4, uh, from Johnny Conlon from Pudding Row in Sligo, and from Fergus O'Halloran at the 12 in Galway, who are all uh, waiting, uh, standing by to, to speak to us. Um, we're going to hear about how they've been adapting since since May and how things have been going for them. And then in the next section, we will meet Seanine Sullivan, who's co-proprietor and chef at El Mulligan Grocer in Stony Batter in Dublin, and Kevin Hearn, who is chef proprietor of Sage in Middleton and Cork. And um, you might not be able to see Kevin. He's probably going to be talking to us uh, through the phone <laughs> rather than um, than on the, the webinar. So you might not be able to see see, what, see Kevin's face, unfortunately. Um, and then our final section, as I said, we're going to look at Christmas. Um, so we're going to kick that off with um, a short presentation from Michael Flynn and Clement Pavi in Musgrave Marketplace uh, about some of the key dates and some of the, the key kind of opportunities and moments over in the run-up to Christmas and over the Christmas period uh, to give some inspiration on how to maybe leverage the opportunities. Um, and then we're going to bring back in Kevin and Seanine with Clement and um, we're going to bring Fergus back in for the hotel perspective uh, for a brief panel discussion on planning uh, a reimagined Christmas season. And um, we'll, we'll take some questions at the end of our discussion with Seanine and Kevin and again at the at the end after the panel discussion on Christmas. So um, please feel free to send your questions into the Q&A throughout. Um, we may not have much time or may not have any time for, for questions for in the first section on our check-in with our previous panelists but if we can fit in one or two questions if they're coming in we'll, we'll try. If you've got a question specifically for Kevin Arundel, uh, Johnny Conlon or Fergus um, do feel free to send it in and I'll come to it if I can. Um, to, to send in questions, um, you need to go to the Q&A panel. So if you, you should be able to see the little orange arrow, uh, it's on the right of my screen, but it could, it could be on the right or left of your screen. But if you click on that, uh, you should be dropped down options and you can drop down to Q&A so you can type your, um, your questions in there. Um, and if you've got any, any issues, um, there is a chat function there. So if you need to ask, uh, an admin a question and um, please feel free to put it in there uh, Rebecca Dunwoody is there in the background to assist um, on that um, and we will be recording the, the webinar and we will send that recording out to all the participants afterwards so I think I suppose before we kind of kick off I suppose I do think it's important to acknowledge the, the pain and trauma even that our industry is going through um, I think, you know, if nothing else, we probably thought at this stage that we were going to have a bit more certainty, uh, but things are still so unclear and they're really, people are trying to make plans with with no clear plan, with a lot of unpredictability and uh, very little guidance on where things are going. Um, and we know that not everyone has been able to adapt and many people are out of work and some businesses won't survive this. I suppose in today's discussion, we are looking at some of the avenues to keep business going, but we do acknowledge that it won't be possible for everyone. Uh, we're trying to stay positive and proactive, but we do recognize the immense challenges that businesses are facing. So I suppose we're, 
I'm certainly not claiming that any of this is easy and I think that all the panelists that are participating today are happy to, to say that they don't have all the answers and what they're doing won't work for everyone. Uh, but there are lots of nuggets of wisdom, I think, in today's conversation and everyone will be able to take something away from it, I hope. Um, what we do really appreciate is the willingness of these panelists to come and share their experiences and their advice. And in speaking to them all in advance and speaking, in speaking to other people in the industry, I think that's what's come across throughout this crisis is the camaraderie in the industry um, and how that camaraderie has grown through the crisis period. Um, operators have willingly shared their, their insights with each other and I think everyone who's participating today and more widely in the industry, what they're doing has come through a lot of, a lot of conversations, a lot of soul searching, but also a lot of conversations with colleagues in the industry and a lot of learning. Um, so, I think that kind of mutual support is something that has kept a lot of people in, going through this period and this webinar is an extension of that. So on behalf of Chef Network and, and Most Great Marketplace, we're delighted to, to, to be able to present this, but also uh, to bring these people from the industry together to, to share their, their insights. Um, so first of all, I am going to, we're going to start with our check-in uh, with our taking on takeaway panelists from earlier in the year. Um, and I'm going to go first to Dublin Four to the Chop House and Kevin Arundel. So, Kevin, you can join us. Good morning, Ruth. Or well, afternoon, then. Hi. Yes. How are you? Ah, strange world. Strange, yes. strange world. Not, you know. Yeah, we got a little light. No, the light. I mean, the first lockdown, we we all kind of felt when we sat here last May. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this right. This one that I feel is much tougher because we've gone backwards again. So it's a lot more mentally strengthening on, on all our colleagues in the business. And then the uncertainty about Christmas. I mean, level three, we've been lucky with an outdoor area and kept the takeaway going. Whether we stopped again and going back just to uh, takeaways, it's, it's really tough, you know. And level five is with us for a while. Do we get Christmas? We don't know. What we found is uh, we added a couple of new things. We do the cook at home kits. So what we pushed on that is you can buy it for your friends and have a lovely dinner at home with your friends, but apart. So you get your instruction sheets with the recipe ingredients, how to cook the dish. You go on your Zoom call with your pals in their house, same time. I'm doing one on the 1st of December for 25 houses. So that'll be quite good. You know, how they're gonna do 25 houses, I don't know. But that's the gentleman wants to do for 25 couples around Dublin. So that's kind of been good. We've opened our diary for Christmas with my small little terrace, which seats 15 stroke 16. So at least I can get back some staff, hopefully, if we get opened on the 1st of December. Um, we found as well, we were doing seven days a week takeaway, Monday, Monday to Sunday, but Monday to Wednesday is really not very good. So we're just doing Thursday to Sunday now, going all the way. What we've learned is you got to tell people you're out there and people want you to survive. So I was talking to a very, very well-renowned restaurateur two weeks ago and I said to him, put on kits of your best dishes for your customers to buy. And he went, really? And it's not something he's never done. And he put it on two weeks ago on social media, resounding success. He was delighted because people want their favorite restaurant, bars, hotels reopen again. So you've got to try and let them help you a little bit if you can you know that's kind of what we try and do and uh, the menu we, we chop and change as we get stuff in and um, but the market presence is very important social media I, I knew nothing about Instagram uh, six months ago or seven months ago I'm not sure how many months ago now and now it's all about the gram for us we kind of people want interesting content to what we're doing and they interact and um, so takeaways here to stay I think forever we're still doing our five minute slot, untouchable. So you put your booking on collect, you get your time for seven o'clock. We leave your bags outside the porch, no one else is there. So it's very safe and that's all we can do. But I have 25 staff and I've got 23 of them gone now until December. So I don't know how that feels, but it's kind of a distressing time. So we've circled the wagons really on ourselves and we stuck together and uh, some of them are coming back third week of November to get set up for hopefully a good December, January with our small little area. And that's all we can do. Do you know what I'm saying, Ruth? And Kevin, have, 
Yeah, uh, have mo- are most of your staff still kind of there on standby, ready to come back when, oh, when well, the time yeah, comes? We, we had so much, we had so much fun on the not fun, but we had such a lovely time with level three with the outside terrace. I mean, we we, we did every two hour slot, and uh, the customers are like it was great to see smiling faces. The weather was quite good. We, I've now learned about heaters and timers. We have all those now, and it was just lovely. People wanted to get out and support you, but we we're very blessed to have that little small terrace anybody who hasn't got one it's it's really horrible and i presume i know um when we spoke back in may you had you had kind of gotten off the starting blocks very very quickly in terms of doing takeaway as you said you you only survived about a day or two at home and then you have to get yes. back into the kitchen two days at home. Into the restaurant. i chose um go back to work or divorce my wife can't see this and now you're dealing you're dealing with a very different landscape this time around there's, yeah, there's yeah. A lot I think the place. biggest one is the uncertainty. Will we get open the 1st of December? You know, people are ringing me day and night and trying to book in all the slots for the Christmas period. And I don't know, you know, which, which is which is not unfair by the government. Uh, I did hear that they're going to talk to people in the industry next week. That's what I was told. So hopefully they'll give us some clear path to say, yes, we'll go with the 1st or not. So people can at least get some revenue stream in for a month which will help. And and briefly in terms of Christmas then, what are what are your plans around trying to leverage Christmas and I suppose what are your contingency plans in, in case you don't get to open? Well, if, we, if we don't open, I mean, it's going to be absolutely a car, car crash for everybody. I mean, literally, we're bouncing along now. I mean, it's, it's, the takeaway is way down because it's too much. We're all trying to do something now. And um, the last time mm. people weren't ready to get going, whereas everyone has to try and survive now. So it's not a viable business for all of us, for landlords or for tenants. So uh, I'm very lucky with my long-term lease here with my landlord. He's been an absolute gentleman. And we're working together to go through out the other side, but with just takeaway, there won't be another side. That's the, re- that's the reality. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And have you got any specific, um, specific plans for, for the Christmas period? In terms of the run well, we of Christmas, since- are you doing anything? We're, we're basically doing a two hour slot five times a day, 12, half two, five o'clock, seven o'clock, nine o'clock, 16, 15, 16 seats. That's it. I mean, that's all we can do. But again, I'm lucky to have that. If, if, they, bring, if they let us come indoors at two meters, or one meter, those who are booked on the outside will get immediately the option to pick book indoors and we reopen outdoors again. And that's, as, as I said, we're in limbo. We don't know that the government aren't giving us any direction because they don't know. Okay. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. We're, heavily, we're, heavily, we're heavily investing in our terrace, but putting more glass areas warm because the winter's really coming this week. It's going to drop down to minus one at night. So I need more doors, keep it really warm. So that might help. Okay. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming back to, to check in with us. No um, hopefully you're able to stay on the line and listen to everyone else. And if there's any questions uh, aimed at you, I'll We'll try and send it your way your way but thanks okay. thanks a million for, thanks, for coming back okay Take thanks care. kevin um so now we're going to go to sligo to johnny conlon in pudding row um, hello hi Ruth. hi johnny how are you doing good good yeah good stuff um so it's fair to say uh, quite a lot has happened uh for, for you since since we last spoke um yeah <laughs> and I know when we when when we did speak, your one of your kind of key things was you said that you were trying to develop a bulletproof model. You said that you were going to try and develop something that no matter what happened in terms of the restrictions and lockdowns, um, you you would have something that you could keep going with. Um, so you might remind us of what you were doing back in May and what has happened since, and have you managed to to create that bulletproof model? I think we have, yeah. Well, back in back in May, we were doing like click and collect for local customers, and we were sending boxes out, uh, like comfort kits that we call them, and boxes with bagels and cakes, kind of all over the country. Um, we d- we decided kind of around May or early in the summer that we weren't going to reopen the cafe this year. Um, there was just too many kind of risks. Our kitchen's tiny. We've uh, kind of real bottleneck coming in at the stairs, and then for half the tables. It just didn't seem um, like a safe option. So we actually 
switched our focus and we've opened up a, a shop in Eastkey um, called The Grocer, um, where we're, we've been doing takeaway food, takeaway coffee, um, sandwiches, and then we have a whole range of Irish products to buy as well. Um, so we've been doing, that's kind of been our main focus. The boxes, um, we kept doing them, but they slowed down a little bit as other places started to reopen. But we've seen a, a big surge in them again um, in the last month or so, and we're taking orders now for Christmas with those too. Um, so yeah, big big change to get the shop open, but it's it's definitely closer to bulletproof than reopening the cafe for us because you know they were only open a month, six weeks maybe, and then it was gone to outside seating. We've no outside seating here. Um, where the, with, even when level five came in with the shop, we just carried on as we were doing. We didn't have to change anything. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And the the shop, um, if I remember correctly, is something that you, you kind of had had in mind for a while. It was something you were thinking about doing, and it was almost like was was COVID nineteen the push to? Oh, totally. Yeah, we've we've been talking about it for about two years. Um, we had a, like a shelf space here. It's actually the shelf behind me where we had a, a few retail products, but we never had enough room to fit in like the range of things that we wanted so we'd always talked about this idea but never really had the time to focus properly on it so you know the crisis kind of gave us the push and the time to to get it done okay and you're you're still delivering your your comfort kits and your build your own box all over the country and is it since yeah. since we kind of went back to level five that that has kind of taken off a bit again yeah, it's gotten much busier, and we've we've launched a Christmas comfort kit as well with like um, mince pies and Christmas pudding and a few other bits, and we've gotten a lot of orders for them, and they they're the vast majority of them are from one person to someone else. So I think no matter what happens with the lockdown, I don't think a lot of people are going to be travelling or coming home from England or or everywhere else, um, or even visiting kind of extended family. You know, they might see more people than they're seeing now but they're not gonna there's not gonna be massive meetups over Christmas I don't think no matter what the restrictions are um so we're kind of trying to market it towards those people you know to send a bit of love to someone else who they can't get to see yeah absolutely and do you is yours mainly just kind of one-off gift gift from a friend or a family member to another or is there a corporate element to it as well um, there's a little bit of, of a business side of it, but it is mostly like family members or we get we get quite a lot of orders from what I'm guessing by the names. I'm guessing they're Irish people who are in like Australia and America and Canada and places like that who are sending them to people in Ireland. Uh, and and is this, like Kevin said, is it very much driven by Instagram and, you know, just social media? Is that how you're getting the word out there or how people find yeah, totally out about off Facebook, Instagram, um, and through our own website and kind of word of mouth. But yeah, the online, the social media has a, a huge part in it. And Johnny, would you be putting a lot of page promotion behind that, or is a lot of it organic? No, it's it's all organic. Um, we've tried paid paid like adwords and things like that in the past, um, but we haven't done that in a long time. It's just organically grown. Um, I don't know. We we just ha seem to have a good following. We've been building it up for years anyway. It's not something you can kind of jump into without paying for it. Um, yeah. But you know, we get good traction on it now. Wow, that's that's brilliant. And just a final question for you, I suppose, in terms of the the shop, um, what has really been working well, and is it is it a case of people kind of coming in to do a bit of grocery shopping, or are they primarily kind of coming in for their for the coffee and the baked goods, and then maybe picking up a couple of things at the same time? Yeah, it's most it's it's more people coming in to kind of buy our stuff. We'd have fresh breads every day and bagels and donuts and things like that. So that that kind of gets people in the door, and then they will buy some other bits usually when they're there. Um, you wouldn't really do your like a grocery shop because it's it's kind of higher end, like you know cheeses and things like that. Um, mm. but yeah, it's definitely our own stuff that's that's kind of the draw for people, and then the other stuff is just kind of extras on top of that. Yeah, and have you found that people really kind of are looking for ways that they can treat themselves? You know, they can't really, there isn't, they can't get out, go out for dinner, or there's lots of things they can't do, so they're like looking for their treats and things at the weekend. Oh yeah, totally. They're, they're, there's a real comfort in food, and that's where, that's where people are getting it at the moment. Brilliant. Johnny, thank you so much for coming back to, to talk to us again. Sorry it's so, it's so short, we could that's talk okay. for a lot longer.
Thanks okay, a million. Thank I'm going to go over to um, to the Twelve Hotel in Galway now for a check in with Fergus O'Halloran. Um, and hopefully Fergus is still on the line. There we go. Hi, Fergus. Hey, Ruth. How are you? Good. Thanks. Um, Fergus, um, I, it's fair to say you've had quite, quite a, a mix of offerings. Uh, you've, you've really kind of innovated. Obviously, you, you got out there quickly in terms of doing your, your kind of drive through takeaway, um, but also delivering your cocktail packs nationwide and doing your home spa packs. So, so very much leaning on the, the 12 hotels offering and not just a food offering. Um, but I suppose what are, what are you still doing now and what has happened over the past few months in terms of your offering? What have you been doing at the different stages? Okay. Um, well, just to pick up on your point there, Ruth, I guess uh, you mentioned the camaraderie and so forth uh, that's within the industry. And um, if one was to take away any positive from what's what's been happening is it is that I think among colleagues we've we've become a lot stronger together. Um, you know, I, I really, if anybody's going to take away something positive from this today some wisdom or nuggets, you know, I hope there are many, but um, the one certain certain positive is that we've all started to work a lot closer together. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to many restaurateurs now that, you know, I hadn't known before, and um, that's, that's a really good thing. I guess for, <laughs> for me, I love roller coasters, and this has been some roller coaster in the sense of, you know, from the first lockdown, you know, we're, we were suddenly dropping down this massive precipice and then you hit these troughs and up and now it's going around and figures of eight. But um, uh, we, we reopened our ground floor restaurant on June the 29th and um, uh, along with that our alfresco dining area, which we developed during the lockdown, put a lot of work into it and um, it's you know it became a really kind of a spectacular part of the 12. it's called noon um you know match uh noon is the irish word for um noon as in 12. <laughs> uh and that was a that was, that's been a huge success uh it's, it's heartbreaking to have to close it but um july the 8th then after one week of uh getting the restaurant working downstairs uh and noon working we reopened the whole hotel that meant um, the other restaurants, uh, the spa rooms, and we went we went full throttle for four months. Um, you know, out the door, um, it was fabulous. Uh, goodwill from our guests, everything, um, reviews, everything was so so positive. Um, you know, we continued with our at home offering all the time. Uh, it became a new revenue stream for us, and uh, it will do forever, we hope. Uh, we entered then into level three, and, um, you know, we had started off doing weddings for 50 people, and then we went to level three, and now we're down to 25. Um, any guests staying with us in the hotel got to eat within our restaurants. Any guests from outside the hotel head outside on, on our alfresco terrace. Um, you know, we immediately launched our uh, come on over, stay over package, which kind of incorporated, um, you know, our, our cocktails, where guests were treated to cocktails from our brown bags in their rooms. Uh, we invested in popcorn machines and it created a really nifty little package for people in Galway to come and stay. And it worked tremendously right, right from day one, you know, and it was done through social media, through our easing database. And... Um, you know, it was all going great, but uh, level five came and here we are now. So we're back to our takeout, really pushing um, our uh, cocktails. Uh, we've introduced a, co a whole cocktail subscription where um, you receive a mystery box every month. And that's worked very well. October sold out immediately. So we're into November now. And uh, we hook up with different brand suppliers. So October was Powers. And... Um, we are with Bacardi now for November, and um, somebody bigged in to be announced for December. So the goal is yeah. to really, really push that, um, along with our whole Christmas team, which I can talk about later. 
Great stuff. Yeah, thanks a million, Fergus. Great to check back in with you and hear how things are going. It's heartbreaking, of course, thinking of uh, for everyone the, the the time and creativity that went into creating the outdoor spaces and the packages for people in the county to stay, which was amazing value as well. And um, but great to hear that you you guys are still fighting fighting the good fight. And um, we'll come back to you uh, as we said at the end when we're talking about Christmas. So thanks a million. Um, so now we're going to go to two two new uh, panelists for, for our webinar. Um, Seanine Sullivan from Al Mulligan Grocer in Dublin and Kevin Ahern and Sage in Middleton. Um, hi Seanine and Kevin, hopefully you can hear us on the line. Hey, yes. Hi, hi, great stuff. Hi Seanine. Um, I want to, I want to I check my camera just in case. Okay, fair enough. I was going to say, did you want to try your camera? It, it, I can try it. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can you can try it if you like because you're joining on the phone. It should it should be okay. But um, if okay. there's any issues, no, turn it off. Um, so <laughs> I, I I'll start with you, Shawnee. Um, well, let's see if we can if Kevin can magically magically appear for us. Um, briefly, will you? I mean, I think both uh, both uh, both Sage and Al Mulligan are 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 two businesses who I think anyone who um just kind of on social media and following will have seen that you've, you've kind of constantly and continuously adapted throughout this period um, and you've kind of tried a number of different uh, different things so I think there's a huge amount for, for other people to learn from, from what you guys have done and I know that you're both very much um, want to kind of emphasize that you, you don't at all think that you have all the answers. Um, we asked you to come here rather than <laughs> the other way around but um, but I do think, yeah, that ev everyone can take away some something from what other people have, have learned. Um, so, Shawnee, would you give, um, give us a, just briefly a picture of your journey since March, where I suppose what you've done, what what you decided to do initially, and what you did um, over the summer and into level three, and now in level five. Yeah, so we're based in Dublin. We're based on the north side of Dublin in Stonybatter. We're um, a pub and restaurant that has a street frontage. So right outside our door is a bus lane and a cycle lane. And we're huge advocates of sustained transport and all of that. So we were very much, when we closed back in March, um, we were sort of of the view that as a street fronted premises, the best thing for us to do was to stay closed and really encourage uh, people in our local community to stay at home, um, for our staff to stay at home and things like that. Um, we did initially, um, and I know we'll probably talk a bit about it um, kind of at the end about the events, but we did do events. Whiskey, a big part of our business offering is um, events and uh, especially beer tastings and whiskey tastings, beer tastings. So we continued to, the, when, when we first closed on the 14th of March, we had a event scheduled for, for the following Friday. So we actually decided that what we were going to do was send those uh, whiskies. It was a whiskey event. We were going to send those whiskies out in small bottles to the attendees and organize a Zoom call. Um, and this is quite a novel thing. You know, I remember the first conversation like, oh, there's this thing called Zoom that you can use. It's kind of like Skype, you know, and uh, it seems surreal now because we're all so familiar with with Zoom. But um, so we did that for the 30 people that had um, been scheduled to attend. And it was a huge success um, and we had kind of thought it was a one and done thing that it was something that we were doing because you know the brand um, Gelson's was already lined up we had the whiskies in stock people had already organized um, you know had purchased their tickets and everything but it became something that was a big part um, of our offering throughout the whole lockdown because it was something that people were really um, interested in and it gave people something to do over Friday um, but we stayed closed um, right up until um we didn't do takeaway or anything like that we right up until uh, the end of may when we could kind of see the reopening date for the pubs on the horizon um initially we had no plans to try to reopen as um solely a restaurant because we didn't we, our license wouldn't have allowed that and of course then when the guidance came out saying we could we sort of made our decisions based on that but we we did ambient food kind of uh, charcuterie boards and cheese boards cocktail kits um, and craft beer growlers. So it's like a flask of beer that you fill from the draft and it's good for about two or three days in the fridge. 
Um, so they were very popular through to mid-July when we did reopen, when the pub reopening date the first time around was in flight, um, which obviously didn't end up coming to pass. So we opened as a restaurant with a maximum of 56 um, for right up until lockdown three, or well, the Dublin specific, you know, uh, level three, where we had to move to outdoor dining. Um, and with 15 people, we have a beer garden. So we, um, we got hot water bottles. We had 60 blankets that we could, would use once and um, then they would be sent to be laundered. Um, and we had hot mulled cider on arrival, things like that. And I think like of all of the levels, I feel like we gave that one the best go. I feel like we had hit our stride and people were really delighted to be out. Um, and, you know, it, we were able to make people, we were able to make it special. So we were able to still kind of um, offer a really warm welcome. I mean, I think when we first opened for the indoor dining, we were quite conscious of the additional safety um, precautions and steps that we were taking and it was a lot more stilted definitely from our feeling although that's not the feedback that we got from customers but I think amongst our small team we felt like oh this is a little bit more robotic it's a bit harder to be as welcoming with the outdoor dining I feel like we relaxed into it a bit more and we were definitely while still being really conscious of all of the safety precautions and concerns I think that we had kind of hit our stride then so we had that for three weeks and then uh, level five. So now we are operating solely as um, for takeaway food and we also opened a grocer um, in the front of the pub because the name of the pub is El Mulligan Grocer, referring back to the days of where there were spirit grocers in Dublin. Um, and we're continuing to kind of do the cocktail kits and um, our whiskey and beer and gin online events. So it's kind of a few different things going on. And it's been that many incarnations that if you asked me what I was doing in the business at any particular date throughout this year, I don't know that I'd be able to tell you with accuracy without kind of going back and looking through the diary. So, wow! Well, thank, thank you so much, Ronnie. That yeah, that's some some journey. Um, it's, it's it's definitely a roller coaster, as, as Fergus said. Um, so, Kevin, if I can come to you now and talk to you about, about your I, journey I, as well. I kind of wish I went first Mark. there now after listening to Seanine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Seanine, you were busy. Holy hell. You've been busy enough yourself as well, Kevin. <laughs> oh, God. That's great to hear other people's stories as well. Though. I think that keep, kind of keeps you pushing as well, you know, hearing everybody else what they're doing. And fair play, Seanine. Sounds great. Well done. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> So Kevin, tell us um, what happened for you when everything hit in March, and and what's the what's the journey been been since, if 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 you can summarise it. <laughs> um, in short, it's kind of the same as most. Like we we closed on the whatever it was, seventeenth or on the Saturday and seventeenth, we reopened doing the takeaway, and um, the takeaway was I suppose the same as most. Even first lockdown was very busy at the start. We kind of found obviously we're in Middleton, like we're not in a town, or we are in a town, we're not in a city, we don't have a huge amount of kind of traffic passing us, we're kind of down a courtyard, so we had kind of a lot of people travelling to us, so we kind of started doing as well as the takeaway, obviously the heat at home element kind of came in then, you know, so we started doing the heat at home, that proved to be extremely popular for people travelling, so then was we had decided prior to lockdown we were kind of re-evolving ourselves anyway we were moving I was moving the restaurant away from fine dining it kind of had going to stay on us um we kind of had a large space as we have a large space here we had a cafe as well as having a restaurant but the idea was to make it all kind of one restaurant so we turned the cafe into a food store so then the food store did all like the heat at home items so then we started doing pre-meals ready meals condiments um, salts, rubs, everything that kind of a way and then that moved into we didn't like when lockdown came around the second lockdown came around obviously the traffic passing our door completely stopped so then I put a I put a program together of what we were selling and basically started reselling it to other businesses so they could sell our item um, like places with food stores that don't have kitchens and uh, give them a good markup on the product so they obviously get good value out of it as well and kind of we've kind of evolved from there to that that's what we're kind of doing now at the moment 
Yeah, so you've moved in the space of a few months from being the chef chef proprietor of a very, I would say, renowned and respected fine dining restaurant and, and, a, and a casual restaurant to a, a retailer and a wholesaler as well as a restaurateur. Um, yeah, I suppose in, in, in short, I suppose that's just kind of the way it's kind of come around. But I suppose being, look, being, being, the, being the owner, it was a case of do what you have to do. Um, like obviously it's kind of different for everybody. Everybody's got to make their own decisions how they go about it. But um, we kind of felt it was a good direction for us to go. And it was a case of what what can we do to survive? You know, like it might be, it's, it, I suppose everybody kind of looks at people and thinks sometimes there's a, a feeling people look at other people and think, oh, we should be doing that as well. But look, we're doing what we're doing to get us over the lines for the next, you know, 12 to 18 months. And then, it it's not been a, an easy road over the last six months for anybody. It's just because what it looks like on the outside, it might look as if it is, but it hasn't been. Yeah, I can, I can well imagine. Um, Kevin, getting into kind of some of the nuts and bolts of it, and I'll maybe ask you a few questions on this, and then and then go back to to Shawnee. Um, in terms of your takeaway model, I mean, you you as you said, you started off takeaway quite quickly, and you've you've stuck you've stuck with it um throughout, and you're still doing it. So how does your takeaway model work in terms of how how what 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 do you offer broadly speaking and what platform do you use and what's the kind of customer journey I suppose and experience? Um, I suppose like we we moved it really like like we actually moved it into pretty much like a takeaway. Um, we didn't do any like fancy boxes to take home or do it yourself at home we pretty much set it up at the beginning as a general takeaway price point was a big thing i don't i don't really agree with the you know people keeping maybe the same price as the restaurants what restaurants are charging obviously we could drop our prices because it's take home food it's still takeaway at the end of the day um but we basically kind of generally ran it as a takeaway kind of like a fancy ish takeaway obviously not your run in the mill takeaway that you'd be having us in other places but um we kind of kept it as a takeaway model, kind of very simple. Not, not um, it and, really and it's over, or, over order on your website, click, click and collect. Yeah, order on the website. Everything was done, everything was moved online. Um, segments are every fifteen minutes, so we take three tickets every fifteen minutes. And um, we start at four, finish at nine. It's been it was it's been pretty straightforward. And then when we introduced the the outside area, when that came back, then after level five, we closed down some of the slots, so we still. We then had four tickets every 15 minutes, so there was two for takeaway and then two for outside. And obviously, when you're only doing 15 people outside, it was pretty it was pretty straightforward. It was 15 people every yeah. 75 minutes. So I suppose yeah, so tell me a little bit more people. about that. How, tell us a bit more about we your setup outside. Was, if you start at 12, if you start at 12 o'clock, and if you give 75 minutes for a sitting with 15 people, and give them 15 minutes in between the seatings. You can maximize to 105 guests per day at a maximum. Obviously, like during the week, you're not going to do that. Well, maybe in the city, you'll probably do it. But generally on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to maximize, if you start at 12, do every 75 minutes, give them 15 minutes in between, you can get up to 105 customers, which really is not bad at all. If you add your takeaway onto it as well, it's quite considerable. And Kevin, did the... Did to giving people a 75 minute time slot so first of all did it impact on spend um, and secondly how did, how manageable was it or how how well the customers respond um i think the spend was everyone would probably agree was nearly up from what it used to be because people weren't out and they had probably some hopefully like some people not obviously everybody but there was extra cash flow there and people hadn't been out to pubs or whatever so they were spending that little bit extra and there was a clear set out when they were booking. So their their terms, their booking terms and conditions, everything was done online. So when they were sent their email confirmation emails, they got everything. They were told exactly how it was going to work. Uh, when they arrived, there was a very friendly card on their table, um, you know, basically stating what had happened and what was going on. We didn't want to embarrass anybody by asking them to leave their table. So please be courteous and just, you know, follow the rules. And, uh, leave your table when you're supposed to and pretty much when it was set up like that it pretty much when there was no no issues whatsoever we didn't have any large groups either as well because we only 15 people so 
generally it was mm-hmm. groups that you'd always have problems moving along anyway, but we had no groups, so it wasn't an issue. Brilliant. And in terms of your 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 retail business, um, I suppose moving moving into the space of um, doing prepared foods and selling them into other outlets as well as in in your own shop now. And um, I suppose I I assume that's been a big a steep learning curve. And what what have been the big the big learnings in that process? Um. Yeah. So like like packaging and everything was a big learning curve sell by dates all the hassle involved and the setup from that was was huge obviously at the at the, the very get-go getting everything up online saleable online um going in like i suppose it's going into sales is kind of different than being being in the kitchen obviously enough as well but it's been it's been enjoyable it's good to actually getting out and going to other food stores and meeting other people and selling your products and I suppose look, we've been kind of fortunate that we've we have a decent enough name in the area and that the product then is a little bit it's not your standard product it's a little bit different than what, what you would get in in certain supermarkets so it's been um, a good saleable item like we've gone in at a good price point we haven't overpriced ourselves um I suppose having two kitchens Perfect. as well has been it's Having two kitchens is a very big beneficial thing for me is that it, it doesn't, um, one kitchen does one thing and the other kitchen does the other thing. So one kitchen there for production that used to be there for the cafe. So that's that's been very beneficial as well to us. But it's definitely a case of learning and keeping every week has been a learning curve to see what's selling and what's not selling, changing dishes, moving dishes, keeping with seasonality, keeping using the local producers that we were always using. I suppose that kind of makes it a little bit different as well than the style of food that we used to be doing it's a different market absolutely as well. um, yeah that's i i assume it has opened up to, to to a different market and um i suppose what kind of things are, are working best what products have proved to be most popular um tough question i suppose we kind of like we we have like 14 we have 14 meals now that we do and generally like that works from God, that goes from like a hot pot to like a vegetarian kind of a dal to and they all kind of they all sell pretty well like like even like if we do like free range pork and like gems and cream sauce and things like that and like what once it's just a little bit different that it's not the regular run in the mill it seems to be working quite well. Um, Brilliant, that's super. Um, Shawnee, now if I can bring you back back in now, um. And hopefully, Kevin, you can you can stay there as well. Um, so, Shawnee, just uh, I suppose um, on your side, in terms of how you work your your takeaway, briefly, uh, like what kind of what what direction did you put to decide to go in terms of what you would put on your menu and how that has worked, and also how you've actually rolled it out in terms of how people order and collect. So yeah, originally when we were when we first started back, it was very much we felt that we had to start back because we knew we were reopening. We wanted to remind people we existed. So, um, but the but we wanted to keep um, the staffing levels very low because at that time um, a lot of our part timers were still on the full um, pandemic unemployment payment. So it made sense for us to try to to do it ourselves. So myself and my business partner Colin did everything ourselves we kind of um i was in the kitchen uh, uh prepping dishes and then uh people we would they, it would be scheduled via click and collect and they would arrive and we would you know fill the craft beer growlers uh you know bring down the food and things like that and that was that was kind of very basic you know sort of okay what can we do without um, absolutely burning ourselves out you know every single weekend so we did that and then um, i think we're having some issues with sound there. I don't know. I can everyone's hearing there's an echo. And um, oh, okay. That seems oh, to be gone there. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So then when we um when we reopened for um in-house dining, we still kept with that sort of ambient and a little bit of heat at home um sort of model. So we did a lot of kind of snack food. So if people were having like a socially responsible gathering, you know, with six people, they could get, you know, uh, black pudding uh, wontons or chorizo or bonbons or something like that and kind of be able to entertain at home because a lot of people were saying, you know, they wanted to support us, but they 
you know, maybe didn't feel comfortable coming back in and dining in house and things like that. And that's completely understandable as well. So, um, but then when we went into level three point something, something in Dublin, you know, when we were told we could only do outdoor dining, we were kind of put in a position where our takeaway had to, we were told on at six o'clock on a Friday that from midnight, it was going to be outdoor dining for 15 people only at um, any one time. And so our takeaway menu that week kind of uh, was just evolved out of what we had on our a la carte menu but then over the coming weeks we kind of saw that things that people really enjoyed were things that were treats or things that they wouldn't necessarily prepare themselves at home um i think you know we work with a lot of like kevin we work with a lot of local suppliers um we were finding that people had a real appetite for buying cheese that they couldn't get in a supermarket or um sunday roasts are very big for us um, we used to do one Sunday roast and we'd do about, probably we'd do 20 um, and when it sold out, it sold out, Twenty between 20 and 30 kind of, you know, when it sold out, it sold out. Whereas now we're doing two different Sunday roasts and a vegan roast every week and we're selling out um, consistently um, kind of early on in the day. So I think people, a lot of the things that people are looking for from us anyway is things that, you know, are a treat. Um, so we also do like a version of a full Irish breakfast on a Sunday, which is, um, we call it the full mulligan and it's like with a, a scotch egg and um, like black pudding, you know, uh, arama shiitakes and things like that. So it's kind of, it is, you know, you're full Irish, but it's maybe, um, you know, just something a little bit different to what you would get, you know, anywhere else in the area. And we deliver on Sundays. That's the other thing, you know, like, um, I think it's really important to know your market and I think, um, you know, we kind of know that maybe in our area, in our immediate vicinity, um, people might be looking for, they might be feeling a bit peaky on a Sunday and they might want somebody to bring them their breakfast to their door. So, you know, and maybe with a Bloody Mary or something like that. So, um, and the way we kind of, we, we have click and collect, like Kevin, we do, we have three tickets um, every 15 minutes, um, but we also uh, have, a call like you can dial in and um, speak to somebody and place your order because again like sometimes people with you know food allergies or you know particular dietary requirements and things like that they might want that reassurance and it also is really nice to keep that connection with our customers the click and collect through the click and collection website is brilliant but it can be a little impersonal so it's sometimes really nice when people ring and they say, oh, this is what I'm looking for, or, you know, um, I want to do something special, or I want to treat someone else. I know a few other people were talking about how people seem to be buying things a lot for other people as a treat. Um, we've had that a few times, and people do like to be able to call and, you know, schedule their, you know, their takeaway with someone on the phone. So that's kind of nice as well to keep that connection with our customers. That's that's super, Shawnee. Thanks, thanks a million. Um, and like speak, speaking of that, I know when we spoke um previously. Uh, oh, first of all, I just want to remind people that if they do have any questions, if they want to put them into the the Q and A box or the question box, um, we'll come to them at the end. When conscious of of time, um, there's a lot more that I would like to talk to Shawnee and Kevin about that I probably won't won't get to. Um, but we're going to move on to the next section shortly. Um, but I. I Speaking about that, that kind of connection with your customers, even them being able to phone. I know when we spoke, one of the things that you said that really struck me was, you know, that you're in the business of hospitality. You're not in the business of putting food in, in a box. And yeah. um, you've how I suppose so. There's been a, like as well as the journey that you have gone on of pivoting your business and constantly adapting. There's a real psychological journey there as well, isn't there? One hundred percent. And like I honestly. Just to echo what Fergus said about how my like my colleagues in the industry have been absolutely amazing at sharing like incredibly hard won uh, wisdom and advice, including Kevin, like who was you know he, he, I messaged him a few times and he, you know really everybody has been so forthcoming with the lessons they've learned and what's worked for them. And of course everybody has to chart their own course, but it's something incredibly um, uplifting to be able to pick up the phone to somebody and say, listen, I'm, I'm struggling with this little thing that's like, we can't seem to get this right. How did you, you know, how did you approach this? And you know, so many people have been so generous with their, with their knowledge and kind of, I think that's been, I, th I think for all of us, we kind of have to accept that realizing what we're doing now is not necessarily 
you know, we're, we're not going to be able to just immediately reach back and grab back the business that we had before all of this happened. And that sometimes like letting go of that is quite a difficult thing. You know, the idea of, oh, no, this is the kind of thing that we do and this is the kind of food that we do. And that for me was huge because I initially I was like, well, you know, like surely we can't open doing that. Like people wouldn't want that from us. Um, you know, that's not what they come to us for. But then what you realize is, as Kevin said, people do want their favorite restaurants to survive. They do want their favorite pubs to survive. Um, and so one of the things that we just started doing, I guess, a few weeks ago was we were doing hot drinks takeaway. So we, we're incredibly close to the Phoenix Park. So we, we have our little grocer menu where people can come and get like a prawn po' boy or something and it's kind of designed to eat in hand. But we also started to do like um, boozy hot chocolates um, the mulled ciders, um, Irish coffees to take away. And the absolute delight that people have when you bring down like, you know, a, a really like, it's very simple. It's just a takeaway cup, but we try to use like really pretty garnishes. I, like I call them Instagram sprinkles. You know, we'd, like we'd use like uh, cocoa nibs on the top of the hot chocolate or rose petals on top of the um, the mulled cider. It's just the delight that people have when you bring that down. And we have these little warm cookies that we give people. And of everything we've done throughout all of this, all of the effort that you know we put in, giving somebody a biscuit to eat with the, like to eat with their coffee, it's just something that's like really it's a moment of joy that you're able to give people in what has been you know a very difficult time for everybody and I think that's been really refreshing for us to see the reaction to people for for like the hospitality that we're able to still show we can't do it the way we used to we can't have people on site we can't you know we can't bring them down you know um you know a taste of something or a, like a glass of wine or an aperitif when they arrive but what we can do is provide like a moment of joy and a moment of levity in, you know in a day so I think that like that is something psychologically that kind of you know it, it, it took a while for me to realize okay I don't have to just do what we did before in order to be able to still you know provide the same kind of experience for people thank you so much Johnny and I, I really love that about you know trying to bring that moment, moment of joy and continue to to find ways of offering hospitality um, and I guess that's kind of really distills it down into like what people can think about doing you know it's like how can they bring that mo moment of joy to, to people and hopefully that continues to, to motivate them as well because naturally most people in hospitality are there because they they want to they want to bring that joy to people um so speaking of bringing joy let's move on to talking about christmas and i'm definitely kind of running over time in terms of um what we talked about so far so I want to move on to Christmas and we may go slightly over time at the end just to get in a bit of the, the, the Q&A um, but um, I'm going to go now to Clement Pavi, development chef with Musgrave Marketplace and Michael Finn who's um, an area manager with Musgrave Marketplace and they're going to give us a, a brief presentation on some of the, the opportunities around Christmas so thank you Clement and Michael. Hi Ruth, hi everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm Clement from Los Graves there. So uh, working and talking with our customers, and as, as we've heard as well from, from, from the panelists right now, uh, the, the, the biggest challenge obviously is uh, we, 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 the uncertainty on how we're going to be serving the customers, our customers, for, for, for the month of November, but also for, for the Christmas season. So as, as, you, as you're planning your, your, your menu there, you know, you, most of us are thinking about how we can, we, we're going to be able to, to serve it maybe as a sit-down offer, but also uh, as a takeaway or a delivered, uh, delivered offer. So uh, talking and working with the customers, listening to the customers, uh, we, we came up with a, with a calendar of, uh, of opportunities and events uh, that uh, we feel you, you could maybe uh, work and design your menu uh, around and your food offer around. So I'm going to, uh, to pass you on to, to Michael Flinzer from, uh, from Galway region. Uh, thanks, Clement. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm, I'm Michael. As you've heard from previous speakers, the ability to change and the ability to be flexible is a key component to date. We're hearing this from our customers and colleagues alike. And with this in mind, we put together a calendar of events which we believe captures some of these opportunities. First we look, event we look at is based around Black Friday and Cyber Monday. For this event, we know there will still be in restrictions of level five, where this will have to be a dine-at-home offering or a takeaway solution. So this event, why not think about a party box? 
nice treats and maybe pair this up with a nice bottle of Prosecco or maybe a cocktail to accompany this. If we look at the opportunity to maybe add a cocktail, selling this in the region of five euro to your customer at a cost of 135 to reduce, this will generate cash profit to you at 270, helping your overall revenue. As we go further through this and we think about people wanting to still enjoy the experience of good food, an opportunity may be around an afternoon tea solution. And again, take this opportunity to add one of your bespoke dishes or some of your own branding to this as you present this party to your customer. The next event we look at and think about is probably the most difficult, and that's around Christmas parties. We're unsure what restrictions will be in place. We know the large Christmas parties that has been tradition will not be taking place. So how can we maximize this opportunity? So with this in mind, we're thinking about the opportunity maybe of a virtual Christmas party where people can get together and the businesses can pre prevent, present a party box at home. And again, look at the opportunity of theming this, maybe with some crackers or some napkins, maybe a nice centerpiece for the tables. And take the opportunity to pair this with some wines. As we go in further along and we look at Christmas and Christmas Day, a pre-prepared a pre option here where the customer can take this and finish this at home, um, taking all the trimmings, add in a starter dessert, some nice treats, and again, maybe a mulled wine option or maybe a fruit punch for the, for the, the younger members of the people that will be enjoying Christmas. Looking at all those events and opportunities for you and your business. Post-Christmas, people will still want to relax and take time to themselves. The opportunity here may be around offering a frozen product at home that your customer can take and use over the coming days, or maybe a pre-vacuum packed option where they can, they can take this and finish it at home. Same Christmas solution that we've looked at can be offered again around New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, but the opportunity here may be around adding maybe a gin experience or a nice whiskey tasting to accompany those meals with it. We talk about all the different opportunities at the days between Christmas and New Year. And as we work with our customers, we help them through some of these solutions and some of these challenges. If you need help you know, or need to contact us, we'll send out the calendar events afterwards and feel free to contact us. I'll pass you back over to Clement now, where he'll take you through one of those options where he'll bring to life a party food offering as a sit down option or a takeaway. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. So uh, how are you going, everyone? So just a few things you, 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 you can think about uh, when, when you plan and design your menu. So, uh, you know, keep two popular dishes and ingredients. Use your signature dish and pick your customer's favorite as, as a lead for your menu. Uh, this is obviously the festive season, so offer the classics, but, you know, bring a little bit of a twist to it and, uh, and, and make it your own. Don't forget about our vegetarians and vegan friends. It's definitely going to be uh, in demand this season, but, you know, going forward as well. Uh, make it easy and quick to prepare, uh, both for your team, but also for your stock management. And of course, do your maths, you know, uh, offer, you know, make sure your menu is bringing you the best GP you can. So um, keeping all those in mind, uh, I've just put a few things together. I've put that, that party plateau together there. And uh, here, I've, I've just picked some classics there. We've got the samosas and the, and the uh, and the vegetarian uh, spring rolls. We've got some falafels with a bit of pomegranate, and it's about the accompaniment as well. I've uh, I've, uh, I've used uh, coconut cream to, uh, to, to make a, a, a raita sauce, and just uh, the soy sauce. I'm just uh, adding a little bit of uh, red wine vinegar and some uh, and some fresh garlic to make it a bit more authentic. You know, so that's you know that's for your classics, that's for your vegan and and, and, and vegetarian friends, but also. You don't know the parties, you know, could be sit down, could be a group of six. It could be also, you know, a, a group of 15 people um, standing up with a pint outside uh, in a heated beer garden, you know. So another thing is, you know, when you talk, think of classics and classics with a twist, you've got the, the mini bangers and mash and the mini fish and chips. Very, very easy to just pick up and, you know, and, and have one, you know, with a pint. And also when I talk about uh, uh, your classics, you know, here, just revisited kind of a, 
a, a bit of a Christmas dinner, but a Christmas dinner uh, just in, in a two bite portion there. You know, with, uh, with a turkey and a ham uh, in, in, in a potato skin there, and uh, some uh, mini Yorkshire pudding with uh, some roast Irish beef. But obviously, all that, you know. Uh, you need to be able also to to deliver in a, in a in a de in a takeaway in a takeaway format because uh packaging has, has come to 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 uh to uh has come a long way over the last few years but over the last uh few months uh it's been a big demand so i've just read i've just done the exact same option but in a in a takeaway uh, in a takeaway box and you know packaging is also another way of bringing your your, your food to life so it's exactly the same version in a different uh, in a different way of of presenting it. And as a as a party platter, that could be something that you know your customers could really really enjoy. So thank you for listening. I'll I'll put you on back to to, to Ruth now. Thank you so much, Clement. That's that's super. Um, and I we have reached uh, the time when we're due to finish um, but I am conscious of wanting to try and come back to the panel discussion unfortunately ran over time earlier earlier in the session and um, so I conscious that some people may need to, to leave which is absolutely fine but if some people are interested in in hanging on for another few minutes and um, we might answer some questions from the audience and talk a little bit more about fans around Christmas so um, I'd like to ask Seanine um, and Kevin her and back um uh, as well as fergus and clement um and if johnny is still with us there's a couple of questions that i might direct quickly at johnny if if he's still available so yeah, yeah. We have johnny oh yeah, thanks johnny i'll tell you why i asked you to come back so we've a couple of questions about about software people asking one person asking what what software people are using for click and collect or what's the best offer for an online shop and then the second question that I thought I'd just like to, to put your way is someone, um, an audience member asked, I said, not all of us are, oh, sugar, I've just moved the screen now and can't find it. Anyway, it was basically to say that not everyone is based in towns and cities and if any of the panelists have any suggestions for businesses that um, are in countryside locations where there's no longer any um, passing trade essentially um so i thought it might be relevant to ask you those questions yeah well the, the the if you're out in the country like we're we're in a very rural location there's a population of like about a thousand people within 20 miles of us not not very much um so the the main thing is to just come up with something that you can send out to people something you can send either through the post office or with ups um and what we had been doing, we'd been sending, or we still are sending boxes with like fresh bagels and things in it. But we're trying to kind of divert those orders for Christmas to things like uh, Christmas puddings, which have a much longer shelf life because the delivery times are just going to go out the window. Um, the closer it gets to Christmas, they're they're already strange. You can see it. Um, where most deliveries would be kind of 24 hours, now it's 48 hours, and that's just going to get longer. So if you're sending fresh products, um it's just a big risk to take so try and try and come up with something that will survive the journey or go like do your own deliveries yourself we do we do deliveries to Sligo town once a week um, and to Ballinar a different day every week because we're kind of in the middle of the two so we just gather up orders all week and then I spend a day just out dropping um, boxes to people Brilliant, Johnny. Thank, thank, thanks for that. I thought it would be relevant to come to you since um, you're, you're very rurally located. Um, and also, I know you set up your website yourself and you have a bit of a, you have an IT background, but um, just in terms of maybe your advice on simple software for online an online shop. Yeah, well, ours is a, it's a WordPress website um, and then there's like loads of free plugins you get for that or there's a few that we've had to buy to kind of do specific things that we needed. But um there's loads of options i think shopify is probably slightly easier for people who don't have much of a background um doing web stuff like i find it a bit easier to use wordpress and it's you can maybe tweak it a bit more but shopify for something just out of the box set it up get your products up there um i think that's probably a good option for people brilliant thank you so much for that for that johnny um and then i might come to someone else has asked um about 
what what software people are using for click and collect. So Kevin, are you still with us? Are you back yep. with us? <laughs> yeah. So, um, what software what software are you using for your click and collect system? It was Table Pass in the name of the company. Yeah, okay, super. And um Clamo, I um I know that Musgrave set up um a platform and we're offering it um free to, to their customers. So can you maybe give us the information on that? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, it's a it's a click and collect. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a it's a it's a platform that uh, that was launched uh, uh, just at the back of me, uh, and um, I just can't find the name in my head now. You just put me on the spot. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I have a, I have somewhere. We'll come back to that at the end because. Um, sorry about that. Uh, no, that's okay. We'll, we'll we'll come back to it. I I uh, took you by surprise with that question. Um, so um, I, I want to move on to briefly talking about um, yeah. Ruth, can I say one thing on the software thing is like we're, we're using different collection, but like you know with with Shopify and with um, Volution and all of those, like the the local enterprise offices are still doing the trading online grant. So if yeah. you get onto your local enterprise office, um, you can you can get a grant to help some defray some of the costs of trading online. So whether that's the subscription charges for these services or photography or those kind of the digital um, tools that are needed. So yeah, the, the Leos have additional grants available for COVID specific pivoting to online. So it's worth that's checking out. Yeah, thank, thanks for mentioning that. You're right. And I know that they, um, they increased the funding to 90%, so you only have to have 10% matched, matched funding. And I believe they've reintroduced, they've opened that up again now with the level five restrictions. So definitely worth going for that if, if you haven't already gotten your website set up or if you need uh, to put more funding into, as you said, um, maybe pushing that out a bit more, because I think you can cover digital marketing with it as well. Um, so um, there's a couple more questions from the audience, but uh, which I'll try and come to. Um, just to kind of speak about the run-up to, to, to Christmas, um, and although we can't see Kevin on our screen, but I might go to Kevin first, and um, then hopefully come around to, to the others. So um, Kevin, do you have some specific plans uh, in terms of Christmas? Um, yeah, so just two items, I suppose. So like we're doing the, obviously the hampers, are going to be a big thing for everybody this year. In fairness, like we've seen the last couple of days, the Irish food champions pushing on that, you know, for the Green Friday. I think that was just an absolutely fantastic idea for Platons coming up for that one. Um, but we're going to do so a collect, collect your own Christmas dinner as well on the 23rd and the 24th. So basically, obviously, people aren't going to be traveling. Well, we don't know what other people are going to be able to travel to other houses for Christmas this year. So some people who are kind of used to going to other people's houses who aren't used to cooking, we're going to basically do a full item Christmas dinner now. I'm actually doing it today, so you have it up on nine from now. So basically you want to click and collect your items that you want for your Christmas dinner. You come and collect it on the 23rd or the 24th and basically then it'll just be a reheat at home with no uh, no stress or anything involved. And it won't be a put it together, it'll just be a reheat. Um, but basically there'll be kind of like a menu that you choose from what you want for your own Christmas dinner and we put it together for you and you collect it. Fantastic. Seanine, have you any specific plans for the run-up to Christmas or maybe over the Christmas period? Yeah, so we, um, a bit similar to Kevin, we're, we're looking at kind of ramping up our heat at home options, making them a bit fancier, a bit more festive. But I think additionally, like we're focusing on a lot of the days around Christmas. So like we, we've got like um, a kit for uh, pork baps on Christmas Eve and we have, um, you know, a product in works where, you know, it's like a roll of cookie dough where you, you know, you slice it and then you, um, the, uh, and then you bake it in the oven yourself. So it's already pre-prepared and things to leave biscuits out for Santa. We've got our cocktail hampers and also then um, we do a lot of food and, drink pairing. So we have a few bespoke ones featuring kind of um, a lot of Irish produce. Um, and then our kind of other parts that we've just put in place this week and that hopefully um, we're going to be able to go live with before Friday is um, the idea of connecting our producers to our customers. So where we would normally take, you know, dozens and dozens of turkeys of, um, of David up in term of fact, and you know, instead of being able to be a conduit for that, um, for people to buy their turkey and things like that. 
um, via us and same with our produce. You know, a lot of the a lot of the farmers that we would use uh, only sell to restaurants. But of course, they're pivoting themselves. But um, there's more kind of Brussels sprouts in the field than one person could possibly ever deliver. So, um, so that's kind of another aspect to it because I think a lot of that, a lot of the green veg and things like that, while the cheeses and everything are things that people want to buy, a lot of um, having that produce there really gives people a sense of um, that this is somewhere they can come to to pick up some nice bits and pieces. You know, it's a very, it's a visual cue. So um, yeah, so there's a couple, we've got a couple of streams in work for Christmas. Um, and like we're operating on the assumption that we will not be able to serve people indoors. You know, that's, we're taking our bookings, but you know, with a big, big fat caveat. So um, and as a pub, I don't see, I don't see us opening as, you know, like, uh, you know, serving pies across the counter anytime, uh, you know, uh, like maybe next St. Patrick's Day. So, so we're kind of, you know, that, the, the alcohol side of it. And that's really important, I guess, because we're a pub, we're always very conscious of that. And because we do a lot of craft beer and we do a lot of whiskey, we're very conscious of that. But people like to get something special that they're not able to buy in Tesco. You know, and that that extends to to drinks as well. So I think you know a lot, like a lot of panelists have done great jobs of putting their um, drink offering together. But sometimes it's it's kind of a forgotten thing, the takeaway. And um, you know, it's definitely worth presenting some options nicely for for your customers. Brilliant, thanks, Charlene. And I love that that idea as well that um, you know restaurants and the hospitality sector can. I suppose provide as well as um, continuing to source as much as possible from their Irish suppliers can also provide a route to market to consumers for for their suppliers. And I know a lot of people did that in the last lockdown in terms of and like yourself, kind of offering some grocery uh, section. And I know a lot of people. One of their big motivations for trying to stay open and operating is to continue to to support their suppliers. And Fergus, I, I know that's something that you said last time around but you know a big motivation for you was to continue to buy from your really precious suppliers that you work with um so i suppose as a hotel what do you think i mean again we really don't know what's going to happen in december but have you got a kind of couple of have you got a plan a and plan b for for december what are you what are you thinking for the run up to christmas and the christmas period okay well um yeah I mean, this pandemic, it's, it's changed. It's changed everybody's way of dining, drinking, entertainment, um, you know, and that's going to remain, um, you know, due to government constraints, our own, our own kind of uh, sense of what is uh, well-being. So, you know, looking to the future, um, you know, I'm looking to the end of next year. It's not just Christmas. So Christmas is just a stopgap. It's next month. Uh, so yeah, we've we've planned a lot for Christmas. We we started working on it maybe a month ago. One thing we've always done on Christmas was our Christmas takeout dinner from our bakery shop. So uh, every Christmas Eve, um, people would pick up the guts of 120 orders. That's that's 100 uh, Christmas dinners for uh, two people. So that's 140 guests served, or sorry, 240 guests served on a Christmas Eve. What we had said was that we were going to extend that to the whole month of December and uh, hit target the corporate market because we won't be doing Christmas or Christmas, private private Christmas dinners in, in our function room this year. They're gone. So um, we'll tackle all of the guests who have booked previous corporate uh, Christmas parties with us. Uh, in that, they'll receive their Christmas box, hopefully, uh, along with um, a cocktail box. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the cocktail box. What it looks like. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Oh wow! Uh, so essentially, it's a few drams and basically everything we make ourselves and the the brown bag cocktail, which has really worked well for us. Very simple. I mean, uh, there's that. We'll be doing Christmas hampers, um, featuring all of our local suppliers. That. The, the sauces, relishes that we make in house, our own mulled wine, brown bag cocktails, spa products. So, really, a, a kind of a, a 12 at home experience. Um, we have a whole list uh, take and bake pizza kits, um, which have worked very well for us during the last lockdown. Um, the Christmas dinner box, 
and uh, what have we got written there? Oh yeah, yeah, curated wine cases. Um, because I mean, we have a massive cellar of wine, and I, I need to be shifting it. And we, we do get a lot of calls from guests who want particular wines, so we figured, okay, well, let's actually create a really kind of a, a deluxe pack of wine that we can uh, send out to people. So yeah, like there's lots. Important that... people don't don't forget about the opportunity, as as Shawnee said, for alcohol sales. And I know Kevin Arnold as well have talked about putting matching bottles of wine with their with their cook at home kits. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for, for that, Berg. It sounds like you've got a lot planned. Um, I'm really conscious that I've gone way over time and I really appreciate that almost everybody has, has, stuck, has stuck with us. Um, there's so much more that, that we could talk about and I'm afraid probably I, I talked a little bit too, too much at length in, in some areas, but um, we tried to cover a lot in, in a short space of time. Um, there is a question that has come in that I do want to come to because I think it's an important one, um, especially in the context of the Chef Network and the work that we've done um, around this. Tracy Daly has said, um, thank you for your terrific insights to all the panellists, um, but saying that everything that you've done to adapt takes a huge amount of energy and uh, she's curious about what all of you do to switch off and um, unwind and mind yourself. So, uh, Kevin, Kevin Hearn, you might come in on that one first. Do we have Kevin? No, Kevin's completely dropped off. <laughs> Good timing. Um, okay, Shawnee, and I'll come to you on that. Kevin back, I think he is. Yeah, I don't hear. Kevin, are you there? No, I'll go to you, Shawnee. Sorry, what was the question? What do you? What do you? How do you? How do you take care of yourself, basically, and and wind and switch off from it all? Well, I mean, we we made the decision early on to limit the number of days because we wanted really to keep our team small, but also we wanted to because we knew that we had to be there. So we knew that we had to be doing these things, and so like you know, Monday, Tuesday are spent um packing and shipping and then wednesday um is kind of our day off and then thursday we sort of soft prep like right now like i don't think i'll be honest i don't think i'm doing a good job of that part at all like so i don't feel like and i think when you ruth when you asked me to be on this you know panel i was kind of like jesus i don't have any insights like you know i i, I have a huge amount of imposter syndrome about um about you know everything that everybody's doing to try to you know keep going but I definitely think from the perspective of right now because I'm in Dublin and we went from level three into like we were supposed to be coming out of level three last Wednesday and when we went into level five that overlap I just think right now it's far fighting and eventually um you know like <laughs> you know once this is all passed <laughs> I'll go somewhere and have a pint and you know <laughs> a nice big cry and then that'll be <laughs> But, I, you know, I do think that that's something that we need to be talking about more. But I just think, you know, certainly for me, like I, I go running in the Phoenix Park. Um, I try to take time away from my from social media. Um, I have hold like I have timers on my phone um, just to limit the amount of time I can be on social media because the endless scrolling and comparing yourselves to others um, can be a bit exhausting. And I think other panelists mentioned that as well, that idea of oh i'm looking at what other people are doing and thinking i should be doing that so um yeah that's it really like you know you know trying to trying to do as much exercise as possible trying to take time away from social media and turning off my email every now and then but other than that like i'm really interested in everyone else's answers <laughs> okay good good so thank you for that and i think that we've lost our connection with kevin Hearn, have we yeah Okay, so look, I think that um, it's a good place to wrap up. I, Clement, do we still have you there? No, I think we've yeah. have lost. Have we lost? Oh, uh, okay, you're there. Um, so can I just check? I think the um, the platform that Musgrave are offering is is it takeout by Musgrave Marketplace? Yeah. Ie is that the? Yeah. It's called Takeout by Takeout by Musgrave, uh, and if you go on Takeout by Musgrave Marketplace, that I, you, you'll find all the informations. Uh, and at the moment, there is a, a, a three-month free uh, registration for customers. So uh, 
you know it's a, it's a good Fantastic. way of, it's, it's a good way of getting into it yes super okay so that's that's definitely worth checking out and um, so my apologies for going so far over time um i'm delighted to see that people stay stayed with us um please do let us know if there's something that you'd like us to, I suppose, other topics you'd like us to address in, in these webinars or something that you'd like to go more in depth on. Um, you can put comments into the into the chat now if you, if you would like to do that, or you can always email us, but um, immediate response is always a good thing to do because it's hard to come back to these things. So please feel free to, to add your comments in, into the chat. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our, our panelists and I really sincerely thank them for giving up their time and um, but also sharing their experiences so so frankly. Um, thank you to our Chef Network partners from Musgrave Marketplace who for their continued support and they really are a fantastic and supportive um, partner of, of Chef Network. Um, and thank you all uh, for joining us this afternoon we really appreciate your time uh, we know how hard it is to, to get the time out to these things and we really do hope it's been beneficial thanks to Rebecca for the tech support in, in the background and everyone who's helped out in, in setting this up um, as I said we will send out a recording of this webinar and um, any chefs who are tuned in if you're not already signed up to Chef Network you can do so for free at chefnetwork.ie um, and if you're not a chef um, but you'd like to the uh, abreast of what Chef Network is doing, you can sign up for our, our mailing list. So again, if you go to chefnetwork.ie, you'll see a link to sign up to our mailing list. Um, thank you all again and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.